Hello, this is Jackie Hill, and you're listening to Searching as Strategic Exploration in Psych 100. After you finish watching this tutorial, you should be able to do the following things. Number one, use a subject-specific database such as PsycInfo or Psychology Database to find the peer-reviewed articles you need for your projects. Number two, use WorldCat Discovery to find peer-reviewed articles on your topic. And number three, use keywords, subject headings, filters, Boolean operators, fills, or indexes to search strategically for peer-reviewed articles. So let's talk for just a moment about how to get started with your keyword searching. Usually when I come into classes and I'm talking to students about finding the keywords to search for to find articles on their topic, I'm telling them to narrow their topic, narrow their search terms. It's almost the opposite for this assignment that you're getting ready to do. Because the truth of the matter is that there may, may very well not be a peer-reviewed study that's been done on your very specific topic. So you may have to search for broader topics that will give you general information about behavior similar to what you're looking for so that you'll have enough information to write that hypothesis. So let's say you were searching the very specific behavior of whether students in the cafeteria when they went to the beverage station got water or some other beverage. So you may be able to search for water versus other beverage, college students, cafeteria, but you might not find anything. There may be no peer-reviewed study on that. So you might have to broaden your keywords a bit, like some of the examples I've got here. In fact, you may have to go through the back door and search for information about soft drink consumption, energy drinks, fruit juice, and find out how much of those things students are drinking to come up with your hypothesis about whether students are actually drinking much water or not. So let me show you one more quick example of things that you may have to do to help broaden your search for peer-reviewed articles so that you can find some information on your topic. So let's say that you're doing your observation on a certain place in, on campus where you're trying to determine if students either stay on the sidewalk or if they take a shortcut and walk on the grass. For instance, that tree over by the corner of the chapel, that would be a great place to do that. So you may not find peer-reviewed articles on walking on the sidewalk, walking on the grass, so you may have to be more creative. So I've been really creative with this one. Now I do want to tell you that this last topic, pro-social behavior, is not a term that I, that I knew and I found it in the description of one of the articles that I looked up along the way and it was a subject heading. That's a heading that a librarian puts into the record so that we can access it. And when I looked up the definition of pro-social behavior, and it's basically that people do things so others will profit, and so I'm really sort of stretching it here, but you can find subject headings in the description of these articles that will help you to possibly replace some of your keywords. So now that you have an idea of what you might have to do as far as your topics are concerned, let me show you where to find some of this information that you're going to need. So we're here on the Moy Library website. The first thing I want to show you is using subject-specific databases. Those are single databases that are about whatever discipline you're looking for information in. So I'm going to All Disciplines, All Subjects, and Psychology. And there are 23 databases that you can look at here. Notice that each one of them has a little information beside of it to tell you a little bit about what the database is about. The two I would recommend are Psych Info or Psychology Database. I think both of those are uh, extremely good and will be helpful to you. So let's just look for a moment in Psychology Database. Let's go back to our water in the cafeteria. We're going to do an advanced search. 
just because you have more options in the advanced search. Number one, you have connectors or Boolean operators. And also you have fields or indexes. If you don't know what peer-reviewed articles are, please take a look at the video that's on the library website called Peer Reviewed in Three Minutes or just do a Google search. It's a great little three-minute video that is an excellent explanation of what a peer-reviewed article is. So I'm here in the psychology database. It's one of the databases that I mentioned to you. And I've set up a search just to show you a search that has worked uh, as far as this topic about whether students choose water or some other beverage. So I did college students or young adults or adolescents. So I gave it some choices. That's broadening. That's not limiting. It's broadening. And I used consumption of water. I've chosen full text and peer reviewed. So I'm going to go ahead and search at this point. Let's look at the filters over here on the left. Notice that it's we've already selected full text from the previous page and peer reviewed. Peer reviewed are the type of sources that you have to have for this project. You have to have at least three. Full text means that you want to find the articles, that the full text of the article is available through the sources here at Moy Library. Now, I don't think in your directions it tells you about the date range of your sources, so that may be a question that you want to ask your instructor. So I want to show you this first article that we got grab a cup, fill it up, and I'm going to go ahead and click on the title, and I want to go into the abstract and details, and what I'm looking for is the subject headings. These are the controlled language that librarians add to book or any other kind of media record so that you'll have access to it, and what I'm looking for are subject headings that librarians have added that may help me search for an article that is about the topic I want. So I'm seeing that there is drinking water, students, and I may then be able to go back to my advanced search and use some of these subject headings instead of, I think I use consumption of water, I may end up using drinking water instead. So let's go back to the full text of the article and just see if we can find a few facts, statistics, details that might help us decide what our hypothesis is going to be. So I'm looking first at the abstract and I see this sentence that says the intervention was associated with a, 50, a 0.58 ounce increase in water intake across all students. Without cups, students were observed drinking 2.4 ounces of water from fountains. And that goes on with a few more statistics there. Um, here I'm looking at how essential water is for a healthy life. I'm looking at this phrase, sugar-sweetened beverages, which I might be able to use in a search. Despite these population benefits, water consumption among children and adolescents is low, and many children are not adequately hydrated, increasing children's water consumption on and on and on. Okay, so these two little bits of information I found here from peer-reviewed article would make me lean toward making my hypothesis that fewer rather than more students would choose water over sugar sweetened drinks, coffee, sweetened tea, juice, those sort of things. So you're building evidence by finding facts and statistics as you go along to make your argument for what your hypothesis is going to be. Okay, so we've been using a single subject database. This database is just on psychology. Let's look at searching multiple databases at a time. So we're back at the Moy Library homepage. We're going back up to this World Cat Discovery, and we're going to Advanced Search. So whereas before we were searching one database at a time, in World Cat Discovery, where we are now in the Advanced Search, we're searching multiple databases. In fact, the four 
default databases that WorldCat searches is this ABI Inform, which is a business database, these two multidisciplinary databases, and then WorldCat, which goes out and searches libraries all over the world and the United States. But there are categories so that you can change those if you want to. For example, there is a psychology, here we go, there's a psychology category. So you can manipulate these. For example, I'm going to remove this business database and worldcat.org. I'm going to save my changes and now I'm down to just two multidisciplinary databases and that's where I want to search. Okay, let me just show you a couple of things about searching in WorldCat. I'm going to do our same topic, our, le our water levels and water. I'm going to change this default index title to keyword. I'm going to change this default author to keyword. I'm going to keep my connectors the same. And remember I've only got two databases I'm searching. I want peer-reviewed. I'm using my filters over on the left. I want full text so that I can see the whole article. And I'm going to choose the last five years. And you're going to check with your professor about what you need to do. So look at this. Hydration habits of a group of university students. I would definitely look at that article. I would open up the article by clicking on the title. I click view description. This one has very little description, so I'd have to go into the full text to see what this article is about. Here are these subject headings that I'm looking at. Here are keywords, but here's the subject headings that librarians enter. Here's the abstract. So uh, if I want to use this article, I can cite it when I get ready to. You're going to use APA. Here's this citation ready to copy and paste. All databases nowadays have cita ready-made citations. You want to make sure that you check them against a reliable source. And this way in WorldCat, you're searching in multiple databases, or you can set it up to search in multiple databases instead of just one. It's just a different way to do things. Let me real quickly show you one little trick that may help you. If you end up getting a lot of articles and you want a good way to narrow them down, one thing you do, can do is change the field or the index. Remember, we change the index from title to keyword and from author to keyword. Well, I'm going to go right up here in the search bar and I'm going to choose my umbrella keyword. And in this case, I think it's hydration. And I'm going to change it from keyword to title, and the abbreviation for title is TI. It tells you ba that back on the advanced search page. So I'm saying give me the articles that have hydration in the title. So let's search, and I didn't save my filters, so let me do those again. Peer-reviewed, full text, and last five years. So now I've only got the articles that have hydration in the title, and there were only two of them. So now that you've watched this tutorial, I think you're going to be able to do several things to help you find the information that you need that you're going to base your hypothesis on. Number one, I think you'll be able to find subject-specific databases and use them to find peer-reviewed articles. I also think that you're going to search multiple databases in WorldCat Discovery also to find peer-reviewed articles. And then I think you're going to be able to use a list of tools that you'll be able to use to help you find the information that you that you need. For example, keywords that you come up with to begin to begin with to help you find your topic, subject headings that librarians have inserted into the records for these articles filters like peer-reviewed and full text, the Boolean operators and, or, and not. 
the fields or an indexes that you can use to search in specific places in the article. And all of these are going to help you search strategically and purposefully for the peer-reviewed articles that you need. If you start your project and find that you're having difficulty, please contact any of the librarians and we'll be more than happy to help you. My name is Jackie Hill and you've been watching Searching as Strategic Exploration in Psych 100. Thanks for watching.